Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. First, my opening statement. What happened in England is going to happen again. Next stop, the United States. Next president, Donald J. Trump. What happened in the UK this week is just the beginning. The world is changing and all you elite establishment, ruling class, condescending Washington bigwigs who think you know better than ordinary Americans are out. Start packing. Your days are numbered. Now, I told you this election was a revolution, but even I didn't know how big it would be. It's worldwide. The headlines scream it. The working class who toil every day to pay their rent and put food on their families' tables are tired of being lectured by the fat cats in Washington and Brussels who preach what we need and when we need it. The Brits, in a monumental upset, made their voices heard this week, voting to exit the European Union. You know, the place with open borders, the one that's being run over, overrun by immigrants as they watch their economies falter? Similarly, Americans fed up with this, we are the world song and dance, will catapult Donald Trump to the White House. I think people really see a big parallel. A lot of people are talking about that, and not only the United States, but other countries. Uh, people want to take their country back. They want to take their borders back. They want to take their, uh, their monetary back. They want to take a lot of things back. They want to be able to have a country again. So I think you're going to have this happen uh, more and more. I really believe that, and I think it's happening in the United States. People want to see borders. Uh, they don't necessarily want people pouring into their country that they don't know who they are and where they come from. They have no idea. Newsflash. We don't want an internationalist country. We don't want world banks, globalization of our economy, a country with no border and no identity. You are not allowed to change the identity of this country. Americans want a nation state. Our country with a history of freedom is combined with a history of responsibility. And yet our proud history, even our money, is being rewritten to accommodate a new worldview. We are so beaten down by political correctness that most of us are numb to the surrender of America. And as for those naysayers, the one who say, Donald Trump just can't win. Listen up. Those naysayers in England got it all wrong, didn't they? Prime Minister Cameron got it all wrong. You know, the one who criticized Donald Trump for his temporary ban on Muslims. And now Cameron's out. Obama, too, got it all wrong, jetting to England as if he were the world's dictator, telling the Brits what's good for them. And while we're at it, Hillary Clinton got it all wrong on just about everything except her bank account. When the President of the United States, a country founded on the Judeo-Christian ethics, tells Christians at a prayer breakfast, no less, to get off their high horse after Christians get their heads cut off, not even willing to mention Islamic extremism, when the President of the United States allows hordes of immigrants whose names, let alone backgrounds we don't even know, while ISIS proudly announces that they're infiltrating these refugees, when states are not even notified who the federal government is sending to live in their neighborhoods, flying in unknowns from Central America and the Middle East en masse, and they demand Sharia law in place of American law, then we are in the wilderness, folks. And I don't want to hear that Americans need to be more humble, that we need more humility, that my free speech needs to be tamped down so as not to offend another's religion. Nowhere does our Constitution say we cannot say something about another's religion. Nowhere does our Constitution say we cannot say anything that offends others. And by the way, where does it say, I can't have a gun? 
Do not use our Constitution against us while you use the same Constitution to shield those who violate our laws, showering them with all the rights and benefits, but none of the responsibilities. When our president's first response to an American getting his head cut off is to show up in a golf cart and then keep on golfing. When he is in and his attorney general's response to Americans being killed by Muslim terrorists is to stand up for Muslims, then it's time to take our country back. And don't tell me that to not take these people in is not who we are. I know who we are. My grandfather was a part of the greatest generation that stormed that beach in Normandy. My dad saw the plume in Nakisaki and later died early because of it. No, you don't preach to me. I know who we are and I know who I am. I am an unapologetic nationalist. I am an unapologetic American. And that statute of liberty that says, give me your tired and your poor and your huddled masses, we never had a problem taking them in from the beginning. We're the most generous country in the world. As a judge, I've sworn in newly naturalized citizens for years and have never been more proud of immigrants and America. But they do it legally. They have to swear allegiance to America, follow our laws, and they cannot be exempt from arrest because of their illegal status as they now are in sanctuary cities. Even the Supreme Court had to stop the president who attempted to ban the deportation of four million illegals and give them an automatic right to work here. Folks, when a man running for president proudly carries with him the sword of socialism, and when a woman running for president accepts money from countries that kill gays and stone women to death for her family's so-called charity, when their holdings are invested in the Cayman Islands and her husband is middleman to some of the world's biggest deals as they feather their nest at the expense of America, it is time to take the country back. So no. I don't believe in globalization. I don't believe in this internationalist mumbo jumbo hogwash. I don't believe in self denigration. I believe in our nation state. I believe in our borders. And I believe in the law, the Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence that outlines the character of the people and who we are. Every week, I speak to you in front of a backdrop. But it's so much more than that. It's the American flag. It represents the spilled blood and treasure of those who gave up everything for this great nation. It stands for freedom, equality, and justice. And I'm damn proud of it. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine.